So on my previous video on the SIG P365X macro, there were some requests in the comments section. First off, people requesting me to prove my theory and my belief that the macro compensator is not that effective. And two, for me to contact SIG customer service and see what SIG customer service has to say about this macro. So today I'm gonna to fulfill both those requests and see, was I wrong about the SIG P365X macro? So now we're going to take the macro to the range and test and see if I was right or if I was wrong about the compensator's effectiveness. And watching um, Brett's video on Nightwood Guns about the macro, I definitely think I probably was wrong at least a little bit because it definitely showed some effectiveness with the compensator versus a standard P365 slide. But we're going to go a little more in depth on this channel and we're going to see how effective it truly is. And we're going to be testing four variations. One is going to be the standard macro with the comp. Then it's going to be the standard macro frame, but with a P365 slide. Then it's gonna be the macro slide on a P365 XL frame. And finally, it's going to be a P365 slide on the P365 XL frame. Now, why so many variants? Well, my theory is that the reason I never really noticed the effectiveness of the macros comp when compared to a standard P365 slide is because the grip is so good. Not only can you fit your full support hand in there, which really makes a big difference, but you just have more grip, more leverage, a lower bore axis than the standard P365 and 365 XL. So when we put the macro slide on the XL frame, that is definitely gonna be a snappier shooting experience normally, I think then we'll really see a difference. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test a couple different types of ammo. We're gonna be using standard 124 ball ammunition and then I'm also gonna be using 124 plus P spear gold dots. So when you have those plus P ammos that have extra powder, extra pressure, uh, that's really when you can see compensator shine. And so we'll see, was I wrong about the compensator of the macro? So what I've got here is some line paper on a target. And I'm using that to measure the rise and fall of the different uh, slides on the different frames like I talked about earlier. Uh, but really quick, I wanna give a shout out to Blackout Customs and Pioneer Arms USA for them to use their facility today. Um, if you want really well-built AKs at a good price or um, go to Pioneer Arms. And if you want a really good custom build of anything, Glocks, ARs, whatever, uh, Blackout Customs has you covered or for any Cerakote work. So check out those guys. I'll put the links in their socials in the description. Big thanks to them for letting me use the range today.
So as you can see, I was most certainly wrong about the macros compensator. While it's not as effective, I would say, as a traditional compensator, maybe about half as effective, it still does make a difference. It still does reduce recoil, especially when it was on that XL frame where I have a lot less to grip onto, a lot less leverage on the gun. That's when you were really seeing the difference that the macro slide and compensator was making. I don't know if this is necessarily worth the price increase just to get this because now there's the TAC Ops variant, which you can find street price for under $700 versus the macro variant with the compensator is net, is still, I think, around $800. So you're spending, you know, $150, $100 more just for some cutting and a shorter barrel. And not to mention the TAC Ops variant comes with a magwell and an extra magazine. And these are expensive magazines. So I really don't think that this is worth it. It would make more sense to either buy, it, buy the parts yourself and put a standard compensator or standard ported barrel on it or get the TAC Ops if you really want and get uh, more magazines and not have to worry about the compensator because you're getting that grip that, in my opinion, really makes a lot of a difference. So I'm about to call SIG here and we'll see what they have to say. I'm going to try and see if they'll be okay with me recording it, recording the call with their customer service because I think that's the best for you, the viewer, right? Fully transparent. I'm not speaking on SIG's behalf afterwards. It is completely going to be whatever they say on the phone and then you'll hear whatever I say to them. So that way it's fully transparent because I know a lot of people have had questions about the macro and you know the authenticity of my review and all that stuff. And ultimately, you know, if you don't want to believe me, it is what it is. But I figured why not be transparent and let you guys hear the phone call. So let's give them a call. following menu. To reach your party's extension, press the pound sign. To reach the company directory, press 9. To reach the customer service department for all six-hour products regarding handguns, long guns, air guns, optics, service, warranty, parts, magazines, orders, and returns, please reach one of the A few moments later... One eternity later. Apparel and more. Press one. Thank you for calling Six Hour Customer Service. We are experiencing unusually high call volumes. I want to run. Your call will be answered as soon as possible. Two very boring minutes later. Hi, yes. Uh, really quick, are you okay if I record this conversation? I just like to record conversations with customer service just for my records. Is that okay? Um, sure, yeah, I guess it's already being recorded, so. Okay. Record. Um, so I'm calling today because I'm having some issues with my uh, X macro. Okay. Um, the finish on my magazines and my slide um, has just been eroding away. It's been rusting really bad. And even on the FCU, I've had some rust. And then there's also a small gouge forming underneath the base of the barrel. Yes, and also the finish on the magazine is starting to wear off and it's rusting pretty bad there as well. Um, I believe, I want to say August of last year. I know it was the, like the first batch that my local gun store got, and I think they got it like 
a day after release. So whenever that would be. And about how many rounds have you put in through a total? Maybe about 2,000. And when did you start to notice the rust was occurring? Uh, maybe about two months after carrying it. Yes. Any cleaning or lubrication products that you use on it? Um, ALG Defense Go Juice. Any other products? Um, uh, Breakthrough uh, Clean Technologies uh, Gun Cleaner and Degreaser. Uh, yes, it is. And what is your first name? Uh, first name. at gmail.com. Uh, just normally in the holster in a uh, drawer when I'm not carrying it. every two weeks probably how often I was cleaning it sometimes more depending how often I'd shoot it but that's about as often as I was shooting it I'd clean it every time I shoot it so Rusting and unfortunately rust isn't covered under our warranty. 
Um, even with the magazines, they're expected to be maintained the same way as the pistol is. Well, I mean, it's more than just rust on the magazines. Like, the finish literally is coming off of the magazines. And so I bought other magazines for shooting. So, like, the carry magazines, I maybe put 17 rounds total for each just to test function with a duty ammo. And literally the finish just on the magazine themselves is, like, stripping off as well, not just rust. Okay, uh, so I can look into the finish coming off of the magazines for you, but in regards to the rust starting on the side in the fire control, unit um i wouldn't really be able to cover anything on that um we could refinish the slide if you wanted it's 99.95 um i could have the fire control unit looked at um but there's no like repair process for rust on the fire control unit so i can't guarantee it would be replaced um <clears throat> in regards to the small um gouge that you're seeing underneath of the barrel um i would request if you're okay with it, sending you an email, just requesting photos so I can see what the barrel looks like. Yeah. Um, and seeing if it needs to come in, um, or from there, what the best action will be in regards to the barrel. Okay, yeah, I have some pictures I could send your way. Okay, so let me just get that so that's what I can send over that picture request. So is that, is that normal though, that, like, because I mean, I've, I've owned tons of different other brands of guns, carried them, cleaned them the exact same way, and I don't have any issues, like, obviously there's holster wear and stuff, and that's one thing, but like, yeah. the, the finish itself, like, rusting so quickly after only a couple months, I mean... Yeah. All right, yeah, I will send um, those pictures your way. I might send it in two separate um, emails, just depending, because I mean, I'll, it may be too big to send them all in one. Actually, would it work if I uploaded them to like a file sharing website and then sent you the link? Um, yeah, what, I like Imgur or something like that? Something. Yeah, that, that should work. Okay, and then it'll let me send all of them, because otherwise it limits how much I can send in one email. You may be able to even, if you want, you could probably just even attach them all to like a Word document or something. Okay. Um, all right. All right. I'll send uh, all the photos I've got, and if I need to take any more, I will, uh, and then go from there. Yeah, already. I'll say, take a look at those pictures once I get them in, and from there, I'll let you know what the best solution is going to be moving forward. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a good day. You too. So while that phone call with SIG may not have been uh, the answers I was looking for and the sort of customer service experience I was looking for, there was, it was definitely a little open-ended and perhaps in the emails with the SIG customer service representative after I would show them you know, how bad my macro and the magazines and the rust on the FCU is, perhaps it would change their tune and I would see some sort of level of customer service in which they're going to say, hey, this is not the standard quality we stand for and we're going to take care of you. Well, I got quite the opposite. Uh, not only do they say that that gouge on the barrel is totally normal and acceptable and it's fine, they also basically said that the finish on the slide, while it's so bad that they may not be able to refinish it, they also won't do anything other than charge me to refinish it. And I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't pay $100 to get the same crappy finish again that already wore off and rusted this quickly. When it came to the magazines, they offered me a 10% discount instead of, you know, replacing the rusty, eroded magazines. And when it came to the FCU, they said there's literally nothing they could do and I would just have to go buy a new one. 
So not a great customer service experience. And all that shows is that this is not a QC issue. This is not a defective gun. This is the standard gun that SIG puts out and is totally okay with. This is their quality standard, this, right? And if you have not seen my previous macro videos, I will link the playlist up above to go check them out. Uh, not good quality at all. And while I much wanted to like this pistol because of how nice it feels, um, how good it feels in the hand, all of that stuff, uh, SIG clearly did not want this to be a quality pistol. They just wanted to make a quick buck, put something out there as innovative, which it is innovative to be fair, but they definitely didn't care about the quality of the product they were putting out there. Now, in comparison to the customer service experience I had with SIG, I want to talk about Glock for a second. So just the other day, I was installing a new MOS plate or a new optics plate on my 34 MOS and I over torqued one of the screws and the head broke off the screw. So the screw is now stuck in the slide. And I was like, crap, you know, I kind of did this to myself. So I'm gonna have to go spend some money, send it to a gunsmith, you know, maybe send it out to Glock and pay some money to get this fixed. And it's totally my fault. So I wouldn't expect a, a company to, you know, fix this, no questions asked. Well, I was like, you know what, let me call Glock, see what they offer before I go to my local gunsmiths. And I called Glock, explained the situation that, hey, I messed up, I over torqued a screw and broke it in the MOS slide. And I was like, do you offer a service? Is there something I can pay to get this fixed? And they're like, just send it to us, pay the shipping, and we'll take care of it for you. No, oh, you used this wrong. No, oh, well, you know, it depends. That's a normal wear thing that can occur. So you gotta fix it yourself, or you have to pay us a fee. Nope, just send us your slide and we'll fix the problem. That's customer service. And comparing what happened with my Glock, where it was 100% my fault, to my experience with the macro, where it just has poor finish and poor quality, I think that is very emblematic of the bad quality customer service you're getting from SIG and the amazing quality customer service you get from Glock. I know people are going to call me a Glock fanboy. I wouldn't necessarily say I am, but whether I am or not, there's a reason Glock fanboys exist because Glock has not only a quality product, but a quality customer service team that gives you a great customer service experience and they're willing to help you out even when the problem with your gun is your own fault or just not their fault. So I may have been wrong about the macros uh, compensator. I was not wrong about the macro overall and about SIG. From that customer service exchange I had, it shows that not only is this not a quality control issue, that this is just the quality SIG puts out, but that SIG does not care about their customers. Yeah, they offered me a 10% discount and they offered me to refinish my slide, maybe, but that's not, a, that's not a good customer service experience at all. That is subpar, especially when compared to Glock, like I just mentioned. And the thing is, I've had bad customer service with SIG in the past, and that was one of the reasons originally I wasn't even gonna reach out to them until people requested it. Because in the past, I had two of their MCX Airsoft guns, their training weapons, and they both broke in the exact same way. And after the second one broke, I was like, you know what, I'm not buying a whole new gun, let me just reach out to SIG, see if they will sell me a replacement part, uh, which is the lower receiver that was breaking, right where the stock attaches. And they basically told me, nope, we have no support whatsoever for these products. Um, we've got nothing you can do for you. You can basically just go buy a new gun. That's it. That was pretty disappointing, but to be fair, that's just an airsoft gun, not as disappointing as with a $800 real gun. So I know some people really like SIG. I know some people are going to say that I'm a Glock fanboy or whatever, or I'm a SIG hater, but you heard it from the horse's mouth today. SIG does not care about their customers. If this video is useful to you in seeing how effective the macro compensator is or seeing if SIG customer service is good or not, which it clearly isn't, or whether you just wanted to see the poor quality of the macro itself, or you just enjoyed watching the video, go leave a like down below. Um, if you think I'm a Glock shill, a SIG hater, whatever it is, well, there's a dislike button for a reason. Otherwise, guys, head in the comments section down below. Tell me your experience with SIG customer service. Tell me your experience with SIG products. If you've had great experiences, that's awesome. I want people to have good experience with their firearm products, but when it comes to these bad experiences like I'm having with the macro, we need to call it out. We need to make it known so that way people in the industry change what they're doing. Because if people keep on defending SIG and defending companies, then they're never gonna change. Otherwise, guys, I'm releasing new videos every Saturday. Subscribe and stay tuned.